Ja schon, nicht wahr? Ja, aber nicht schön genug. Meinen Sie nicht auch? <lacht> How about just waiting, though? Waiting becomes a pleasure if it's waiting for you. You talk like a poet. Well, why shouldn't I when I'm inspired by a perfect poet? Eric, this is lovely. You're the most thoughtful man in the world. Here, you must have one yourself. I feel like a proud knight being decorated by his lady fair. You are my proud knight, aren't you? I hope so. But what's the matter? Have I said something to upset you? No. But, but you look unhappy. I am. I am unhappy. Terribly so. Eric, I have to say goodbye. What? You're going away? Yes, to London. I must go. When? Tonight. Tonight? But I thought you said you were going to stay here at least a month. I know I did. But something has happened to make me alter my plans. It's terribly important. Something I can't tell, even you. But surely you owe me some explanation. I know I do. But I can't give you one. Oh, I know how you feel. For I feel the same way myself. Let me do that for you. You know, this is all so awfully strange and mysterious. Like some old melodrama. A week ago, we hadn't met. You didn't mean a thing to me, and I didn't mean a thing to you. Now you stand there, filling my pipe and disturbing me terribly. Can it be possible that we've only known each other such a short time? Just seven days. It seems much longer than that. Yes, but much has happened, Jane. We've had a perfectly glorious time. And until ten minutes ago, I was possibly the happiest man in the whole world. But now, I'm... Reden Sie mal, was in der Zeitung steht. Oh, I, I forgot you. You don't know German. Germany has declared war on Russia. Oh. May I go, friend? I have a boy who will be called. Yes, Hans. Thank you. War is a ghastly thing. God knows what this may lead to. Probably a good thing you're going. You'll be safer in London. You're not going away because... because of someone else. Oh, no. You mustn't think that. There's no one else. There couldn't be. Eric, will you say goodbye to me here? Why here? Because I want my last thought of you to be here in this garden. Well, we've been so happy together. Last talk? You don't mean that this is really goodbye? No, not goodbye. Just Auf Wiedersehen.
morning. Ah, good morning, Miss Gershon. Prompt as usual. Just to show you that I don't need much more prompting. We shall see. Shall be. It's becoming such a nature to me. Right. You are now no longer Jane Gershon, Lyle and Courtier. Who is this? Major General Sir George Crandall, KCB. How long has he been in command of the border? Two years. Who is this? Lady Crandall. How did you first meet Lady Crandall? Our mothers were friends. Have you seen much of Lady Crandall in the last few years? Not since I was 14. Has your family kept in touch with Lady Crandall? My sister Pauline writes to her all the time. And it was through her that Lady Crandall invited you to visit Gibraltar? Yes. What was the name of your governess when Lady Crandall knew you? Elizabeth Brecken. And what is your name? And after whom were you named? My name is Ellen Corche. I was named after my Aunt Ellen. Where have you been living the last three years? In Paris, studying the violin. Anywhere else? No. That's splendid, miss. 1893. <laughs> Correct, number 1893. I think you pass anywhere, and any test. I will, because I feel as though I really am Ellen Fortier. We have to be careful, because I feel this house is being watched. Would you like to go over the plans again? I don't think it's necessary. I have a picture of every room in my head. You'd better take this. You never know when you may need it. You have all your instructions. Yes, but are you sure there is no chance of the actual Miss Courtier appearing? None whatever. We have taken good care of that. And the passport? Here. Also her violin. I hope Miss Gershon still plays the violin as well as ever. Yes. And where is the luggage? Her luggage is at your hotel. I almost believe it myself. Of course, I don't have to tell you to be careful. Chief Walter is not exactly a pleasant spot for people in our line of endeavor. I'll be careful. I want to impress upon you that this is not only an unusually important mission, but an unusually dangerous one. And on no circumstances whatsoever must you reveal your identity, except by the innocent use of your number. Remember, you're acting absolutely alone, without assistance. In enemy country, your sex cannot save you. Male or female, you are a spy. I understand perfectly. There's no more to be said. Except, auf Wiedersehen, Fräulein. Auf Wiedersehen, Herr Hauptmann. Ich bin genauso deutsch wie Sie. As German as I. Perfect, my dear. Your name is Buckley now. 
you certainly have a great deal of courage to come back here at this time. I, uh, I don't know what you mean. You know exactly what I mean. Belke. Sergeant. Sir, the guard. Sergeant of the guard. Two men. Quick. March. Oh. Left turn. Left turn. Quick. March. Not a very pleasant thing to see on landing, I'm afraid. No, it isn't. I'm sorry, but it's war. Miss Cotier? Miss Cotier. May I ask why you were in Gibraltar? I've come to visit Lady Crandall. Oh, I beg your pardon. If you don't mind waiting a minute or two, I'll see that Lady Crandall knows you're here. That's very kind. You see, uh, in order to go through the fortifications, one has to have an escort. I understand. And how long must I wait? Possibly 10 or 15 minutes, Miss Cotier. If you'd rather wait in that hotel across the street to Paris, uh, I'll send the car over there. Thank you. Boy, take this lady's bags across the street. <laughs> Good morning, mademoiselle. I'm the mate to the hotel. Good morning. I am at your service. Thank you. You see, I'm the guest of Sir George and Lady Crandall. I'm just waiting for the car. Well, then, uh, uh, while you are waiting, permit me to offer you the hospitality of my private office. That's very kind. I see, Mademoiselle is a musician. Not a very good one, I'm afraid. Violins are my hobby. Oh, yes? Will you uh, permit me to look at yours? By all means. Oh. And uh, I should like to play it. I see you have my favorite melody. That's odd. Do you know it too? Not very many people do these days. It's not so old. It was written in uh, 1889. No, 1893, I believe. So you are one eight nine three. I'm glad you've come, Fraulein, before the nervous. And you are 1889. But tell me, how did you ever recognize me? Well, I was told to uh, look out for a pretty lady carrying a violin case. Mark? E.C. Everything is working fine. For 12 years, I've served the Wilhelmstrasse, Constantinople, in London, and here on the Rock. But never before has there been such an opportunity. Well, let's get down to business. Good. You have studied the plans of the fortification of the rock? No. I remember them quite well. You see, I was here seven years ago.
Here are the plans that will give you the details you need. Study these tonight and burn them before you sleep. And be careful. Yes? You know room B? Yes, as I remember, that's next to the governor's office. Right. Now, in that room, there's a safe, to which only two have the combination. The staff major and myself. There it is. The dual combination. It sounds all too easy. Don't fool yourself. There are two sentries on duty by day and one by night watching that room. Well, sentries are only human. The safe is not. It is charged with electricity and will kill anyone. Anyone who doesn't know the right way to touch it. And how am I to learn the right way? Let me show you. There are three handles on the panels on the bookcase. Yes. The two on the right, you turn so. And the bookcase on the wall will slide away, exposing the safe. Then what? No. On this safe, there are two dials. I see. But if you stand in the natural position to open the safe and touch those two dials, you'll not only give the alarm, you'll electrocute yourself. Electrocute myself. That's a charming idea. But if you stand 16 inches back from the safe, so, and over, you can work the combination without danger. Hope you're right. And in the event that you are, then what do I do? the drawer marked D, there is a key. Tomorrow morning, early, you must get it out. For at five minutes to five, number 54 will come to you for it. And who is number 54? That none of us know. But he will meet you there and make himself known to you. Until then, you must work alone. Pardon, sir, but there's an officer here. An officer? Yes, sir, with a car from Miss Cartier. Miss Cartier? Yes, sir. Oh. General's aide, you know. Oh. I've been sent down to escort you to his quarters. How do you do, Captain? Uh, oh, really, I please forgive me. I haven't introduced myself, have I? I'm uh, Lieutenant Archibald Plantagenet Chumley, Royal Garrison Artillery. How do you do, Lieutenant? Uh, oh. Yes, it's, it's an awfully long name. Don't you bother with it, please. <laughs> Most of my friends, and quite a lot of people who really aren't my friends at all, Call me Archer. Just plain Archer. But it is so sudden. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the luggage is in your car, sir. Oh, all right, thank you. Uh, shall we go?
Scozia e le Francesche. I was nearly going to call you child. But you've grown into a woman. A beautiful woman, if I might say so. That's awfully kind of you. Somehow I, I don't recognize you at all. You've changed so. Changed? Why, yes. I pictured you as being entirely different. But I suppose you've surprised everybody. You know, as a child, you weren't particularly good looking. But now, you've developed into a most extraordinarily beautiful woman. Oh, oh, rather, Lady Crandall, yes. Most extraordinarily beautiful. I uh, think uh, Sir George was looking for you a moment ago, Archie. Why, Joe, that means I've got to go and report, I suppose. I should if I were you, Archie. It will make you any happier. You may tell your fellow officers from me that Miss Cotier is grade A. Oh, oh really, Lady Crandall, I... And that you'll be here for several weeks. Well, I'm so glad. You know, I... I'll be seeing you again, Miss Cotier. Yes. <laughs> goodbye, Archie. Uh, I beg your pardon. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Yes, of course. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> He's a nice boy, but still a boy. Oh, but do let me think about it, yeah? Come and sit down. Thank you. I'm so glad you brought this. Oh, my sister has a picture like this on. Oh, yes, I know. It's my favorite one. Rather better me. That's why I sent it to all my friends. But tell me, how is Pauline? Splendid. Very happy and very busy with the family. You know, you almost give me a shock when I think Pauline having children. How time flies. Why, it seems only yesterday we used to rock together. Indeed, it made me feel quite old when I saw you standing at the door. Somehow or other, I didn't expect you to be as just as you are. I suppose we all change. I don't think you look a day old. But tell me. How is Sir George? Oh, Sir George is very well. When he's very worried. I suppose it is a great responsibility being in command of Gibraltar, particularly now. But it isn't only that. Well, he's dreadfully upset because of spies. Spies? Yes. The intelligence department has notified him to take every precaution. But surely it's impossible for a spy to come here, Gibraltar? That's just it. It isn't impossible. Why, only this morning they caught a man at the barrier. Did they think he was a spy? Think it, my dear. They knew it. Sir George is just arranging for his trial. Poor fellow. Rosa, thank goodness that's over. Yes, there's nothing I hate more than a court martial. I think we should be locked up at once. Uh, come in. Captain Woodhouse, sir, of the Royal Engineer. Woodhouse? Engineer? Uh, yes, sir, that's the uh, new sapper to assist me. Oh, oh, yes. Show him in. Major General Crandall, sir? Yes. So you're Woodhouse, eh? Yes, sir. Glad to have you with us, Woodhouse. Thank you, sir. This is Major Bishop. How do you do, sir? How are you, Woodhouse? Have you got your movement orders? There you are, sir. Thanks. Had an eventful journey? Not particularly, sir. I came through Spain. France, of course, is in a turmoil. The line is chaotic. Paris is black as pitch after dark. You know, everybody there is suspected of being a spy. Our intelligence department is suspicious, too. They think the Willemstrasse has agents everywhere. And the orderly told me that you caught a spy trying to slip through this morning. We did. We just come from the court martial now. Court red-handed. Court devils to be shot tomorrow morning. I couldn't have admired any pluck, though. Our intelligence department thought he might have accomplices on the rock. And they offered him his life if he betrayed the master spy. Of course, he denied everything. Uh, these all right, Woodhead. Now, look here. There's something for you to learn. It's the sapper's job to keep it working. By Joe, that's clever, sir. How do you do it? <laughs> There's a lot about this room you'll have to learn. The duplicate controls of all the harbor defenses are here. Well. Oh, 
concealed, of course. You'll soon learn all about our little tricks, except the combination of that safe. That's Bishop's secret. Yes, I hope no fool tries to meddle with it. <laughs> be a convenient method of suicide. I see Lady Crandall's having some friends to tea. Why don't you come over? Oh, thank you very much, sir. But uh, this Mufti, hadn't I better change the uniform? Oh, well, that's all right, my boy. How do you do, Lady Crandall? You arrived at a very appropriate time. Do you know anyone here? Uh, no, I'm afraid I don't. May I inquire who was playing so delightfully? Oh, Ellen Courtier. And she's just as beautiful as her playing. Would you care to meet her? I would like to. Uh, Ellen, dear. Yeah. I see you know each other. Why, uh, yes. You do know somebody, then? Well, I certainly didn't expect to find Miss Gur... I didn't expect to find you here. <laughs> Small world, isn't it? Yes. Uh, okay, <laughs> come along. Let's go and get some tea. Well, I don't need it, Miss Archie? <laughs> but you didn't tell me you were coming here. I? <laughs> I didn't get a chance to tell you anything. You were the one who did all the telling. You told me you were going to London. Let us go out on the balcony. Quite right. Goodbye. Thanks. I beg your pardon, sir. And Mr. Kappa insists on seeing you, sir. Kappa? Kappa? He said she was with you in India, sir. Oh, that kappa. Show him in. Very well, sir. And, uh, you stand there. Very well. that service I did for you in India, Jerry. Of course not. You were paid for it, weren't you? Yes. What I've been hearing about you since then hasn't been altogether a, a complimentary. I hope it isn't true. Well, I did go to pieces a bit for a while. I was sick. I've been running him pretty hard for the past two years, but they can't keep me down much longer. I'm going to show them. I hope so, I'm sure. Wanted to see me about. Gentlemen, I'm an Englishman. You know that. I may be down and out, and my friends may not want to know me when we meet, but I'm English, and I am loyal. Yes, yes, I'm sure. I've no doubt about that. 
I just wanted you to keep that in mind, General, while I talk. General. Remember Crane? That chap in Burton. Crane? No. You haven't forgotten him, General. You haven't forgotten how he lived in Burma a couple of years, mingling with the English, until someone suddenly found out that his real name was Kranz, and that he was a mighty unhealthy chap to have about? Surely, General. Yes, I remember him now. And there was Alice Broughton, now, too. Now, thank you not to speak about her. I'm sorry, General, but you thought she was all right until a couple of Secret Service men walked into Lady Langdon's drawing room and took her away. Come, come, what are you driving at? Out with it. General, you couldn't let me have a little drink, could you? One peg of decent scotch. Oh. Well, if it'll help you to talk more intelligently. I've just come from the Paris Hotel, General. There was a girl there today had a private confab with Alf. She said her name was Kochi. Well, what of it? Remember Crane, General. Remember Alice Broughton. What do you mean? What do I mean? I mean that this girl who calls herself Kochi isn't Kochi at all. She's a spy. What? Amadi, show this man out. So help me, General, I'm telling you the truth. I know the real Ellen Kochi. I knew her in Paris. I can't prove what I say, but the wildest dreams of the Willemstrasse come true. They've got a girl here, right in your quarters, General. I don't believe it. It's true all the same. I'm warning you. That's all I can. Now. Now I'll go. Good day. Goodbye, Kappa. Goodbye, Sir George. I told you once I couldn't give you an explanation. And I still can't. But, Jane, it's different Shh. now. You mustn't call me Jane. My name is Ellen Courtier. Oh, now I understand. When I met you in Germany, you thought perhaps it would be a nice little adventure. A romantic adventure with a stranger. So you gave me an assumed name and then left me. You needn't have done that, Jane. You could have been honest with me. I was. Then why did you tell me your name was Jane Gershon? I can't tell you anything. But now you say your name is... Co Good heavens, Jane. You don't mean to tell me that Courtier is an assumed name? No. I am Ellen Courtier. Do you realize what you're doing? Do you know what could happen to you? Only this morning they picked up a suspect at the barrier. I know. He was right in front of me when he was arrested. What happened? What did they do? If you're interested in knowing, he's to be shot first thing tomorrow morning. Oh. This is war, Jane. When that poor devil tried to get through here this morning, he didn't know that his own side had sold him out. It's too horrible. Horrible, yes, it is horrible. Once I had to attend the execution of a spy, he didn't die like a hero, poor fellow. He died like a dog. But don't you think, after all, a hero is one who, knowing he may die a dog's death, still carries on? I beg your pardon. Lady Crandall sends a conscience to Captain Woodhouse. He requests the pleasure of his company at dinner. Well, thank you. I'll be delighted. You were here as a junior officer, weren't you? I was, sir. Then I want you to come over to dinner tonight. 
Yes, sir, but uh, this uh, chart of the mine. Well, never mind that. Let the new aid do it. This is even more important. I've just heard a ridiculous story. But nevertheless, I can't afford to ignore it. Yes, sir. Well, what is it? Well, it, it's preposterous, of course, but... I've just been told that our guest, Lady Crandall's friend, is... is a spy. You don't say... Was it a reliable person who told you, sir? Oh, not at all, but... I shall have to investigate. I want you to help me cross-examine her. Very well, sir. Shall we, uh, bring her in here? Oh, no, nothing official. We must do it in a more casual fashion. What do you remember about 1907? Let me see. Cragen was governor. Cragen. Then she must remember his wife. That's a source. What do you mean? You have a portrait of her hanging in your drawing room, sir. No one who ever knew her could fail to recognize it. Let's try her on Lady Evelyn. Splendid. That's a splendid idea. Come on over tonight. Out with you, sir. Tell me, why don't you like Gibraltar? It's too suggestive of war and death. Oh, this is the quietest place imaginable. It used to be an old monastery. Oh, it seems funny to think of a lot of old fat monks sitting around toasting their toes in front of this very fireplace. Yes, it would be funny. But as a matter of fact, that fireplace has only been built five years. Five years? Yes, Lady Crandall told me so. Oh. What are you doing, Archie? Trying to frighten Ellis? Oh, I say. <laughs> You know, Archie can lose his heart more easily than any boy I've ever known. Oh, he's in good company then. Is that sarcasm or admiration? Oh, no. You know, I've often told Archie it's a good thing Lady Evelyn isn't here now. Oh, Lady Evelyn Cragen? Yes, Sir David Cragen's wife. Oh, of course. Yes. She was a terrible flirt. That's her portrait here. Can't you tell? Oh, yes. Yes, she has that come-hither look in her eyes. I, uh, hope you're enjoying yourself, Miss Cotier. Oh, oh, she's having a splendid time, sir. <laughs> I suppose you take care of that. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> it's been so nice to have you come and dine with us. Oh, believe me, Lady Crandall, it's a pleasure that I've missed. But you know how I'm, uh, changed my death. <laughs> like Atlas. Carrying the whole weight of the rock on your shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> well, I shall hope to come more often, now that uh, I have Woodhouse to divide the weight. Oh, uh, coffee or liqueur? A liqueur, if I may. Yes. Won't you join the Woodhouse? Yes, yeah, thanks, old man. I will. You know, uh, I'm surprised you don't remember, Miss Coutier, Bishop. I'm afraid he doesn't remember the lanky youngster that once was me. He was a lieutenant then. And subalterns have eyes only for the colonel's wife. <laughs> I suppose the old rock looks familiar to you, Miss Coutier. But seven years is a long time. Let me see. You were here, sir, when uh, Cragen was governor. Yes, yes, sir. Sir David Cragen. Did you know him, would I? Uh, no, no, I think not. Oh, he's a corking chap. Mm -hmm. Yes, big, blustering sort of a fellow. Wasn't he, sir? Why, no. As I remember, Sir David was a short, fat man. Rather bald, with a saber scar. <laughs> Of course, so he was. Yes, my mistake. How stupid of me. I, I must have been confusing him with someone else. I imagine so. The reason I remember Sir David so well is because I've had tea with him in this room many times. The place seems very much the same after seven years. Do you notice any change? Why? Somehow this fireplace doesn't look familiar to me. By Jove, you have a good memory, Miss Courtier. It wasn't built then. Though a woman is privileged to forget, it's sometimes very important that she have a good memory. Oh. Very. 
<clears throat> then you, uh, you must remember Lady Cragen. How could I ever forget? Seven years or seven. No one could ever forget her. So it was the general's wife and not the colonel. <laughs> but she was a wonderful woman. Yes, indeed. Do you think her picture is like her, Miss Cotier? always thought the hair was glorious. And the eyes. What expression. Tell me, does it still make your heart beat fast for Major? <laughs> <coughs> well, uh, yes, it's a uh, dashed good likeness. <coughs> for my part, I think Lady Evelyn brought great discredit to the British Army. Just think, one small woman capturing an entire garrison. And I always thought Gibraltar was impregnable. And it is. To the ordinary invader. <laughs> Look, Sir George. Ships. Dozens of them, all grey and wonderful. What does it mean, Sir George? That's the British Mediterranean Squadron, my dear. Wonderful. Wonderful. There's the power and the pride of England. Gives one quite a thrill, doesn't it? Yes, it probably thrills our friend, the enemy, in a rather different way. You know, it always gives me quite a homesick tug to see those grim old dogs. I haven't been to the home to the little island in four years. It seems as though the old rock was to have quite an awakening. Yes. <laughs> and you're just the kind of girl to do it. Oh, uh. <laughs> yes. yes, sir? Go and find out the latest reports from the fleet. At what time they'll be ready to sail. Yes, sir. Well, Bishop, and what do you think of Miss Courtier? Oh, that's all right. He knew her before. And it's just as well that he should know what we suspected, even though I'm now convinced that I was wrong. I'm not so sure. But she, she knew about the fireplace, and she recognized Lady Evelyn's portrait. What's the trouble, sir? Stop. A fellow I shouldn't have listened to. Came to me with a story that your friend wasn't Miss Courtier at all, but a German spy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jane, I'm glad I found you. I've been looking for you. I wanted to speak to you alone. I wanted you to explain. I don't understand. You never told me you were an officer in the British Army. I made no attempt to conceal the fact. If you didn't, you were very reticent about it. Jane, if I was, it was because I had a definite reason. It was very difficult for you to understand me when I told you I had a reason. But that's it. I believe you. I'm willing to take your word. That's because I care for you. And I want you to care for me. I do. And Jane, if you do, you must promise me this one thing. You don't know, you can't possibly know the risk you're running. I wouldn't ask you if it weren't for the fact that I love you. But here you're running a terrible risk. If anything should happen, why... You must promise to do as I ask. What is it? Leave the rock as fast as you can, by the next boat. Well? I can't. So that's your answer. Please try to understand. I understand. Perfectly. Well, what is it? Excuse me, sir. Major. 
Major Bishop requests that you see him immediately in room B. Very well, I'll come at once. Your answer is still the same. Good night, Miss Cartier. Ah, oh, there you are, Woodhouse. What, what did you want me to do, sir? Madam Cartier, here's a chart of the harbour and straits. This is the plan showing the distribution of the mines. Please check them and send them out to the fleet immediately. Right, you are, sir. Well, good night. I'm, uh, I'm off to see the uh, fleet close the door. Good night, sir. Lady, you can't go in that room. But it's very important. No, lady. Orders is orders. What's the trouble? I have something to say to you, lady. All right, Sentry. It is a beautiful sight. Each one is a little world within itself. But tell me, why are the lights blinking all the time? They're sending messages. Do they send messages all the time? Jane, you didn't come in here to ask questions. You said you had something important to tell me. I hope you think it's important. Well, what is it? I came to tell you that I love you. Jane. It isn't easy for me to tell you this, Eric. To swallow my pride and follow you. But I couldn't bear to see you leave me like that. I just had to tell you. Darling. Captain Woodhouse. Miss Gotti, what's the meaning of this? How did you get in here? I let her in, sir. I... It was my fault, Sir George. I insisted upon coming in. So because you insisted, Captain Woodhouse broke the rules. You must be a very eloquent persuader, Miss Gotti. And as for you, Woodhouse, this is hardly an auspicious beginning. Chumley. Yes, sir. Will you please escort Miss Gotti to her quarters? With pleasure, sir. And when you go... Lock this room. Yes, sir. Captain Woodhouse, I wish to talk to you. I say that the old gentleman certainly was boiling. Do you suppose he's going to be very severe with Captain Woodhouse? Well, I, I don't know how severe he'll be, but I wouldn't like to be in Woodhouse's boots for the next half hour. Although I, I wouldn't have minded being in his boots for the last half hour. You know, I don't blame Woodhouse. I'd let you go anywhere you want. I feel just like a prisoner. And you're my guard, taking me to myself. Yes. Isn't it jolly? Why? Well, I, I've never had you to myself for five minutes yet. Some bounder always comes barging in. Now that you're in my official charge, I've got you alone at last. But only from here to my room. Oh, that's all right. He certainly ordered me to take you to your room. But he didn't say how long I was to take. Taking you. Oh, I see. Well, I mean, we might... Uh, Sort of dilly dally on the way. We might what? Uh, dilly dally, loiter, rally round. Huh? <laughs> you know, I know a lovely place. Here, we might listen to the nightingales sing. Are the nightingales on Gibraltar? Uh, no, but there are monkeys. 
<laughs> Don't you remember? What? You brought us over for a run with Monkey. <laughs> Yes. Rather pretty, isn't it? It's more than pretty. It's beautiful. It's hard to think of them being fighting machines. They look so peaceful now. Somehow their blinking lights remind me of fireflies dancing. Yes. I like watching the blinking lights, too. Let's sit down. I'd love to see them when they spring to life. When they sail out to sea in formation. It must be beautiful. I'd like to stay up all night and wait until I sail. Topping idea. I'll stay up all night with you. Yes. They sail tomorrow at dawn. At dawn? Yes. Six o'clock. The dawn round here is frightfully early. Yes. Do you know what makes tonight... Especially beautiful for me? No. You. Uh, no. Yes. <laughs> I feel very much honored that I should be so important in the life of Lieutenant the Honorable Archibald Plantagenet Chumley. Oh, Miss Cordier. Alice. I, I mean Helen. Ellen. Please don't drag me. You know, I'm dreadfully sincere. Yes. You know, ever since you arrived here, I've been walking about in a daze. You know, you were possibly the most blue eyes I've ever seen. <laughs> and I just adore blue eyes. Yes, I love blue eyes. Would you mind going away, old man? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much. You know, ever since you came here, I've been walking about all goofy. You know... You have possibly the, the bluest eyes I've ever seen. <laughs> yes, I adore blue eyes. And yours are the bluest in the whole wide world. Oh. Darling. Now, now, Archie. Oh, but Helen, you are so gorgeous. What if Sir George should see you now? Oh, bother Sir George, Helen. <laughs> no, but really, I have to go to my room. Won't you take me? Lady Crandall was waiting for me. Is she really? Yes. Why didn't you tell me? You're so fascinating, I almost forgot. Oh, there you are, laughing at me again. <laughs> Come along. Well, I, I brought you back safely. <laughs> Much as I regret it. Good night, Archie, and uh, thank you. Good night. Oh, I say.
so it is you. Eric! I came here expecting to find someone, but I hoped it wouldn't be you. Why did you expect to find someone? do this as skillfully as you played that tune. You know, the one written in 1893. You! You of all men! Surely you can't be number 54. Yes. I am number 54. Oh! Please! Oh, please, get away from here. Before you're seen. I'll put the key back and no one will ever suspect. No, Jane. I tried before to get you to go. And now I beg you again to give up this. But don't waste time. Please hurry, for my sake. For your sake? But I'd always heard that you, number 1893, were the most fearless and ruthless woman in the service. Oh, Eric, please go. I have told you I love you. If you love me... Do you think I could leave you here to bear the brunt of this alone? No. Oh. Oh. Eric, you couldn't do this. Come here, dear. No. You couldn't send those sleeping men to their death. Trapped like rats. Mangled. Tortured. Drowned. The man who loved me couldn't do that. Now you're talking like the woman I love. Not like the ruthless 1893. But why? Why are you pleading for these men? I'm not pleading for them. But for you. Why? Because I love you. I love you more than my duty, more than my life. And there's only one end for the man who does this thing. Death, with his back against the wall. Why, Jane? realize that what you're asking me to do is impossible? But you can't go on with this, Eric. It's all too horrible. What are the lives of those swine on to me? If I fail in this, it means my life. I'm not like Belkie who sold us out. And for a woman, too. He's to be shot at dawn. Oh, but Eric... Oh, the time's getting short. The guard will soon be here to change centers. You go to your room at once and let me get this thing done. I'm not going to let you do it, Eric. I love you, but... Love? You speak of love. You were traitor to the fatherland. The love of such a woman as you is an insult. You call my love an insult. So this is the real Eric. Then you'll see another side of the woman you tricked. You said 1893 was fearless and ruthless. I am. And unless you give me back that key, I'll kill you. Oh, but Jane, you couldn't do that. You wouldn't force me. But if you do, you leave me only one alternative to raise the alarm. There we What's that? Pick up! Oh! The firing squad. Bobelke. Ready! Hey! You see, Eric, that's what will happen to you. I couldn't stand it. The man I loved couldn't die like that. I couldn't let you feel that I had died like... like Belky. Give me that key. Do you know what you're doing? Do you realize that you're sending me to my death? Off 
Wiedersehen. been listening to you and uh, that weekly watching you both you made a pitiful creature out of a brave man and a useful one you sent him to his death and as he died so will you die. Oh. But first, you will see the men you pitied. As you so aptly put it, mangled, tortured, and drowned. I am number 54. You, Sir George's faithful servant. Yes, I, Sir George's faithful servant. have waited ten years for this. But Eric... You were sent to help me. And you killed him. For nothing. I don't need to tell you what these are. This one is the master control to the mines which will destroy the fleet and bring death to the men I hate. And your death also. You fool. Your death. Your hand will be found in the control. And I, Amadi, would have shot a spy. But too late. Thirty seconds, all the relays will be set for the mines under the fleet. Oh, 
servant was an enemy spy. And I want you to understand that no matter what Miss Kirchhoff may have done, you can now thank her for the safety of the fleet. Come in here. Sir George, it's owing to Eric, Captain Woodhouse, that the fleet is safe. Please don't be too hard on him. Don't you know? Hey, Joe, the intelligence department certainly have a peculiar way of working. They didn't let me know who you were until this morning. I don't understand, sir. <laughs> You're both working for the same cause. Miss Jane Gerson of the British Secret Service, allow me to present Captain Woodhouse of the intelligence department. But, Eric... Why did you let me suffer so? But, dear, your life was in danger every minute. I saw his pistol behind the curtain. There was nothing else that I could do. Jane, darling, I've so much to say to you. 